Welcome everyone. I thought it was about time for me to present you this project. It's called the Bibbits. So the basic concept is simple. The Bibbits are creatures that can eat food pellets to gain energy. They then use energy to survive longer, lay eggs and pass down their genes. The interesting part is that they are not programmed to do anything. Any behavior, like going forward, has to be evolved. So how does this work? Well, they are given a set of inputs and outputs, or you could say, a set of senses and possible actions. At first, they have absolutely no brain connections, meaning they will do absolutely nothing. However, under random chances, they can be born with mutations, like going forward. If they are lucky, they will then blindly run into a pellet, which will provide them with food, so they can lay a few eggs and pass down their genes. Over time, and through natural selection, they should develop more complex behaviors, like steering toward food, holding food for later if they are full, or developing some kind of memory. They also have basic genes that don't influence their behavior, but other factors instead, like size, speed, color, mutation factors, and a lot more. Most of them have other impacts, like their metabolism cost, which is the basic energy cost to stay alive each second and is calculated from their size and their speed. Their genes are all simply stored in a table of numbers. When a mutation occurs, each of these numbers has a small chance of being modified, affecting the bibit and its offsprings. Their brains are a little more complex than their genes. At first, their brains were hard-coded, meaning I programmed them to go toward food, to want to mate when ready, and so on. At one point, I took an online course on machine learning, and after studying neural networks, I thought it would be a great fit for this project, and so I tried applying it to them. I started searching, and after a while, I found a neat evolutionary algorithm for neuroevolution of augmenting topologies. You could see how fitting it was just by its name. It's an evolutionary algorithm specially tailored for natural selection. I inspired my algorithm from a variant called RT-NEAT for real time. This implies that, unlike most generic algorithms, the simulation is constantly running and there is no generation step where we evaluate the fitness of every individual and select which of them passes the round and get to reproduce. Instead, I leave all of that to a real natural selection. Their fitness score is simply how well they survive and pass their genes. Under this algorithm, as previously said, we spawn them with an empty brain. There is then many things that can happen through mutations. They can develop a synapse that will link two neurons, propagating values between them. Mutate the strength of a synapse, making the connection weaker or stronger. Disable a synapse, rendering it ineffective. Evolve a synapse into a hidden neuron. Mutate the function of a hidden neuron. And lastly, to remove a synapse or a neuron, also removing any floating structure. To determine their behavior, we then just propagate the values forward at each time step. Even with such simple basic building blocks, we could see how complex behavior can easily emerge. Because my computer is not that good and is starting to get pretty old, I have to regulate them a little bit or they get so good and numerous my frame rate falls to minus infinite. A good number where everything stays stable and smooth 
is at about 200 bibit in total. The fact is they get progressively better and better, so if I keep feeding them the same amount of pellets, they will keep growing restlessly. To prevent their infinite growth, I can reduce the number of spawn pellet proportionally to the number of bibit over 200. This will have the advantage to keep an equilibrium. However, even if their number is stable, the equilibrium might not be at 200. So to bring them back toward 200, no matter how good they are, I have to gradually reduce the number of pellets by a certain factor, as long as there are too many bibits on screen. As a result, the pellets will continuously adjust, so the equilibrium is around 200. It feels a little cheesy but I have a few ideas on how to fix it in the future. So what's next for the future? Well, first, from a lot of comments, I get that a lot of what's happening is not obvious enough. We need to be able to interpret a lot more from the visuals instead of having absolutely no clue of what's going on. A lot of people have suggested linking colors to stat instead of them being independent parameters, like having the blue color represent speed. But I really like the fact that their color is kind of a witness of their genetic drift and can be used to identify species independently of their other genes. Tell me what you think in the comments, I need help on this one. One of the things that is completely unclear, to not say hidden, is that they have the capacity to produce and sense pheromones. My idea was that it would allow them to communicate or form structure that are bigger than only one individual. However, there is absolutely no visual rendition of that phenomenon. So when we are watching the simulation, there is absolutely no way to know if the actions a bibit takes is correlated to that. As of now, it works kind of like a broadcasting tower. When a bibit produces pheromones, it is detected by every other individual up to a maximum distance. I think I'm going to replace it with them leaving a trail or maybe both. But what's certain is that I'm going to make sure that it appears on screen now, probably as clouds or something like that. Again, leave a comment if you have a better idea or if you feel more inspired than I am. Another thing I've been wanting to add for a while is predation. Having certain bibit that can prey on others would create a more competitive and interesting ecosystem. It would also force the simulation to develop a food herbivore carnivore equilibrium, solving my initial population control problem. I think I'm going to implement that through a spectrum, meaning a float number will represent their position on a scale, determining how herbivorous or carnivorous they are. This also means that it will allow them to be omnivorous, having access to both pellets and meat as food. Of course, being able to eat both will have to make them less efficient at digesting either source. To help with that, I think it would be a good idea to rework the energy system so it's more realistic and stable. As of now, I have to continuously spawn food for the simulation to run. If I stop, food will never spawn by itself and every bibit will simply die. The primary reason this happens is because everything happens at a loss. Energy is not conserved. I'll try fixing this with the help of our friend Antoine Lavoisier's famous saying. Nothing is lost, nothing is created, everything is transformed. I made a little diagram to demonstrate my idea. I'll take time to explain it in the next video. So anyways, that's that. I'll be posting updates on development, feel free to subscribe if you want to be notified when it comes out, but I can't promise uh, frequent uploads, this is just a hobby. As always, I'm open to any idea or suggestion you might have. I assure you, I'm bored enough that I'll read every single comment on this video. So, thanks for watching.